Good afternoon, everyone. This is Frank McNally from Public Spend Forum. It's uh, right at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is the scheduled start for our webinar. We're going to give everyone a moment just to get in here uh, and get settled before we kick it off. A few housekeeping announcements. We're using Zoom for our webinar presentation today, and it's really easy to use Zoom if you're unfamiliar with the interface. Most of your control panel is going to be in the bottom of the screen, so if you hover your mouse around the bottom of the screen, it should bring up a little toolbar there. You can um, use the chat or the Q&A to ask us any questions throughout the session, and um, we've got some, some uh, lovely professionals that will be moderating that chat room for us and can take your questions. We do have a pretty full um, agenda today, so I don't know if we'll have time for questions at the end, but if we do, we'll try to pull a few of those, um, uh, those questions and discuss them on the line. So just a moment before we get started here, thanks for your patience, and we'll be right with you. All right, it's two minutes past the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone on the East Coast. My name is Frank McNally. I'm the Director of Learning and Content Development here at Public Spend Forum. I'm really excited about our webinar today on smarter procurement in the public sector. I think we can all agree that that's a relevant and worthy topic. We're gonna to be presenting case studies from the City of New York in Canada from our sponsor, Evalua. And thank you very much to Evalua for sponsoring this webinar and really pulling the, um, the session together. We're, we're joined by Ty Levine um, from Evalua and myself, and I'm gonna advance that slide. Uh, so like I said, I'm the Director of Learning and Content Development here. You're not gonna hear much from me after these first initial, in, initial slides. Uh, it'll mostly be the Ty show, and we're fortunate to have him. So Ty, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your role and what you guys are up to at Evalua, please? Sure, Frank, thanks a lot. Great to be here with you and those that are on the call, hopefully around the world. Um, Ivalua is a leading procurement software platform, and we are known for the concept of smarter procurement. So when you hear that and see that, we hope you think of Ivalua. We're a full suite solution, but configurable, so that we can work the way you want to work, rather, the way, rather than us or anyone else asking you to change completely. We are proud to be the only procurement technology provider that is in the Gardner Magic Quadrant and Forrester and Spend Matters leadership positions. As I mentioned, we're a global company and our customers are global as well. And in, in the public sector space, which we're very proud to be a, 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 a known leader in, just mention a few of uh, our, our clients that are um, familiar, probably familiar names to many people. City of New York, we'll talk about them today in Canada, SSC and BCLC, CACI in the federal supplier space in the DC area, state of Arizona, and the Paris Airport are just a few of the, uh, the companies that uh, are the public sector organizations, I should say, that are part of our portfolio. I'm personally responsible for our Americas region uh, from a marketing standpoint, so think of it as, uh, as far north in Canada as you can get, probably the Arctic Circle as they claim to be uh, owners and possessors of some of that, all the way down to uh, south of South America. So it's North America, Central America, Latin America, and of course, South America. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you uh, some highlights from the uh, city of New York and uh, our work that we do in Canada. And Frank, I'll turn it back over to you. Oh, thanks, Ty. I appreciate that, and uh, and thank you again to Evalua for, for being our sponsor today and for making this possible. So just a quick note about Public Spend Forum for those of you unfamiliar. We are a market intelligence and best practices platform. We've been around um, for three years, but really earlier than that. And what we do is help government programs and buyers connect in the, uh, I'm sorry, buyers and suppliers connect in the public sector and accelerate their impact through several different sort of priority areas for us, market and supplier intelligence, best practice tools and data, which you can get from publicspendform.net, and then of course, our open global community and expert network, which is free and open for anyone to join that global community at publicspendform.net. 
And I'm also really excited to softly launch our latest tool, which is GovShop, a one-stop shop for faster, simpler government contracting market research. Now, this is formally going live next week at our, uh, at our booth at the National uh, Contract Managers um, NCMA World Congress. But if you do want to get a sneak preview of what we're doing over at GovShop, you can go to GovShop.com and poke around uh, at our beta site. But like I said, that's going to go live next week. It's a really impressive tool, a great way for contracting professionals to do focused market research on government contractors and companies that focus on public sector solutions. I'm not going to say much more about that. Uh, you'll have to stay tuned to what's going on at Public Spend Forum to learn more about GovShop. And if you're at NCMA World Congress in Cleveland next week, you can come by our booth, 702, uh, and get a demo of what we're doing with GovShop, test it out, and learn a lot more. Evalua will be there as well, just a couple booths over at booth 724. So we look forward to seeing many of you, hopefully, at the World Congress. It's a great event. And that's all for my uh, announcement. I'm going to turn it over to Ty for our program today. Ty? Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Um, so, so one of the things that uh, we're going to talk about today is that in many respects, this is a tale of two cities, but it's not two cities. One is a city, and that's the city of New York, and that, and the other one is um, a federal agency in Canada. And so there are unique differences, but there's a lot of similarities in the two. Um, so before we get into this, um, I want you all to think about a couple of themes that I'm going to really talk about, and I'm going to reference them a couple of times as we, uh, as we go through this. And that is the concept of agility and being able to think ahead. So the public sector globally is undergoing massive changes. New administrations, some with greater fiscal spending, tax changes, constrained budgets, and much more scrutiny and regulation. And for those of us in North America and probably around the world, the word tariffs is a big word these days as well. Public procurement and finance officials are keen to implement policies and programs to to tackle the challenges of managing public spending better, automate processes, increase efficiency and transparency. Now more than ever, there is a need for visibility and accountability into how government funds are spent, just as there is in any corporation. Public, public procurement officials at the national and local level and the suppliers they work with feel the impact of this as do the recipients of the public services. Many public entities are taking the opportunity to begin initiatives that will provide the necessary level of control, efficiency, and visibility. They must do this in adherence with changing policies, regulations, and directives, while continuing to maintain supplier relationships, keep processes and operations going, and effectively managing risk. In the private sector, there's pressure for procurement to deliver more is greater than ever before. Help manage new risks like cybersecurity, help drive innovation from suppliers, and have a focus on driving costs lower. In the public sector, there is often even a greater need, with budgets increasingly absorbed by entitlements, leaving discretionary spending squeezed, while constituent expectations rise. It is challenging enough for your private sector peers, but the public sector faces their challenges plus more. We talked about it, unique regulations. For example, we'll talk about this more. The city of New York had legislation that dictated some processes had to be paper-based. Budgets that can't easily be shifted because decreases in one area leads to cuts. In many cases, a large number of agencies have their own system and process. Inertia from bureaucracy that is hard to change. 
but public sector organizations are finally embracing changes needed to increase value and address these challenges. Topping the list of why now is the simple word digitization. By embracing the same technologies delivering value for private sector peers, digitization is a no-brainer as it supports all stakeholder groups. So let me talk about this slide, for example, for a little bit. In the government leaders, you've got maintained financial control, visibility across agencies, again, agile and flexible processes. You never know when new requirements will come down. For the public, you want to improve quality and value. They want improved quality and value. They want to see transparency. They know that in their daily lives, their lives are modernizing and services are, are occurring, and they want to see progress from your end that you're taking the same approach and delivering. And then for, from supplier's point of view, they want to make it easy, you want to make it easier to do business. They want greater transparency and greater access to information. They want to see cost savings in both their time and the money that it takes to do business with you. And at the end, they want to improve collaboration to improve outcomes. So it's important from a public sector empowerment that it's happening all over, at cities, states and provinces, and federal agencies. We've been working with leaders across North America, North America and Europe to make this happen. Many of these companies, are, I keep saying companies, but many of these organizations operate just like companies do, and they've broken down many of the challenges and are making a real difference for their constituents. I mentioned some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, the brands before, some of the agencies before, and you can see those on the screen. So now let's talk about two leading organizations that are transforming public sector procurement: the City of New York and a public services provider at the federal level in Canada. First, let's look at the City of New York. New York City has been a leader in a range of public initiatives. New Yorkers are notoriously demanding customers of their private sector providers and their government. That said, driving innovation and improvements is no easy task. Frank's gonna help me go through a bunch of bullet points that are gonna pop up on the, on the screen here, but the need is so great that given both expectations and the sheer number of people impacted by the city's policies, here are a few stats to give you a sense of the diversity in the city. And one I'm going to focus on, and that is the large number of residents under the age of 18 at 24%. All told, they have a very disproportionate share of millennials or digital natives. They clearly expect similar levels of efficiency in government processes that they have been used to their entire lives. When it comes to procurement, the city's goal is to ensure fair, responsible, and timely procurement. What does that entail? Ensuring compliance, effectively leveraging technology, providing transparency into processes to demonstrate they are indeed fair, responsible, and timely, and continually developing the team and improving results. Here's another slide with a bunch of bullet points. But I want to welcome you to the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, or MOCS for short. The central office supports the, and needs of 200 agencies. It's like a city in and of itself. As many, <laughs> excuse me, as many purchase independently, they have over 27 procurement systems. I will note that this is, a, this is a challenge that not only public sector faces, but private sector companies as they grow and they grow their technology face challenges like this as well. And their processes are governed by 238 regulations. As I mentioned earlier, an old law actually dictated paper-based processes. Let me add, there is a large diversity of jobs. Each agency is like its own individual company. You can easily make the comparison to the, of the city of New York with 200 agencies 
to a large multinational corporation with offices and divisions all over the world. This illustrates the opportunity to improve efficiencies and provide cost savings. To give a sense of complexity involved, and don't go out and get a new pair of glasses as you try to read this, this is a process diagram for a competitive sealed proposal. I don't expect anyone to actually be able to read this, but that's the point, mind-numbing complexity. The process for a new vendor to register to bid on a contract before iValua came in and the City of New York digitized and modernized took an average of 13 months and 12 pounds of paperwork. Just imagine that. This is obviously insanely inefficient, not environmentally friendly, and certainly doesn't build trust and confidence in the government. So last year, the city of New York embarked on a digital transformation of procurement. Don't forget, many suppliers to the city are constituents themselves. They called their project Passport, which would cover the full source to pay process and broke the effort into three phases given the complexity involved. But to start off, they had to actually change the existing law dictating paper processes. They gained the support of Mayor de Blasio and pushed through the required legislative change. In parallel, they did an evaluation of technology providers. Given the desire to digitize the full S2P process, they focused on integrated suites. Other factors they had to consider included supplier-friendly portals, here charging supplier fees, limiting activity, or having vendor-imposed requirements was a big no-no given the importance of treating their supplier constituents fairly and the desire to simplify the process. Agility, there's that word again, the city had many unique requirements and the dynamic legislative and regulatory environment meant that a rigid system that imposes that imposes standard private sector best practices without the ability to modify processes was not going to work. Ultimately, they selected iValua. They then proceeded with phase one, tackling the vendor management process, where they felt the pain was greatest. Getting this in order was also critical to later successfully addressing the ordering and payment process. Over the second half of 2017, they successfully rolled out their new vendor management passport system across all agencies. This, this of course, involved a technical implementation, but also a significant people component. The MOX group had to explain the system to stakeholders at those agencies, convince them of its merits, and gain their buy-in. Of course, that meant that this process took several months and longer than would to digitize the vendor management process at a typical private sector company, but the end result was well worth it. The city is now working on phase two of their journey. From a technology perspective, one key was to ensure all information was captured and could be verified. This is an image of the new portal for vendors, which has now been in place for several months. Three things to take away. It's clear. It's simple and it's efficient. This simple screen and some additional ones as vendors click through the process replace that 12 pounds of paper. The entire process is now digital and the time for completing registration and being approved has been cut by well over 90%. Information that previously had been entered over and over again on different forms can now be entered once and automatically populated and shared every place needed. It's a great example of the win-win-win scenario I described initially. Suppliers save endless hours of frustration. Information is more quickly gathered in proposals, more quickly processed for savings in employee time and budget. And the entire process is now transparent and easily auditable. It is also a great example that driving transformation is possible even in the most complex public sector organizations facing inertia, bureaucracy, hundreds of agencies, and even prohibitive legislation. Now let's take a look at a federal agency, this time across the border in Canada. This federal agency organization is one of two managing procurement for federal, Canada's federal agencies, this one focused on IT. 
This, this federal organization is taking the lead in transforming procurement with an initiative they call IST. Their goal is to modernize outdated processes and standardize, standardize across agencies. We just talked about New York City. The parallels are identical almost, this one at a federal level. They are also looking at transforming the complete source to pay process, but in their case focused first on P2P. The effort is being driven by a procurement executive who spent the bulk of his career in the private sector and is bringing that mentality and focus to Canada, federal agencies. There's that word again, efficiency. The federal organization is adopting a new system called procure to pay P2P, to electronically manage procurement to payment processes. P2P is part of the department's IST initiative, and it will improve internal, internal efficiencies as work related to procurement will be routed automatically for PVR and finance employees rather than following the current manual process. Also, delegated managers will provide electronic approvals instead of signatures on paper. It is in line with the expectations of Blueprint 2020, which is a catalyst behind the transformation. Here's what the P2P portal encompasses. Management, suppliers, staff, and the P2P portal itself. And here's a snapshot of the P2P portal. So let me leave you with a few takeaways. The private sector looks at procurement plat platforms as a way to drive cost savings. The public sector is focused on transparency and regulatory compliance, but in the end, when efficiencies are created, transparency, compliance, and cost savings all result from effectively moving to a digitized procurement platform. And let me create a scenario in your mind for a second that you can think small, medium, mm -hmm. or large. So I'll throw out three major metropolitan areas in, North, in the United States. New York, Los Angeles, or Washington, D.C. These have central cities as their geographic dominance. But there are lots of cities and towns relatively close. And when I say relatively close, forget traffic congestion, but within, let's say, 30 minutes to an hour. And imagine a central procurement hub sitting on top of each of those main regional hubs, to use that term again, and those acting as a regional procurement hub with all of those cities and towns inside of it, and then growing to include the counties around it. It's only the beginning of what can be done to increase efficiency, increase cost savings, improve agility. So as I said at the beginning, there are four benefits. Better manage public spending, automate processes, save a lot of trees and time, increase transparency, which is a focal point of all public sector organizations and initiatives, and increase the efficiency on how you do business, how people do business with you, and how everything is managed moving forward. I want to thank you all, and if you've got any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Thanks a lot, Ty. I appreciate that. There was a lot of information in there. Um, we did have a, a, a couple general questions. Um, we will be uh, sending out the presentation um, that, that Ty shared in hard copy after this uh, session concludes. And, and um, if you are in the market for continuing education or continuous learning points, uh, we'll be providing those as well. Just send us a, a, a note, reply back to that um, that uh, session email that we shared, and you can get in touch with us to get your certificate. Um, so, like I said, we would like to uh, invite any questions from the audience. We have um, we have a little time remaining here. If anybody has them, um, and maybe I can just ask Ty. Uh, you know, it, and there's a lot of benefits to what you shared, and a lot of really interesting stuff to making you know cities. Uh, smarter and their procurement processes more efficient. What are some of the challenges that you think uh, cities typically face when they when they look to do 
um, work with your organization specifically? You know, I think that the uh, th that, that's a good question, and I think it's it's not specific to I value what it has more to do with how do you move from snail based solutions to technology solutions. And I think a combination of a couple of things. One, understand that this means change. And as I mentioned about how we do business, um, we believe that we created a full suite solution. You can start with whatever module you want, or in the case of CACI, um, one of the federal customers that I mentioned at the beginning, they took the full suite from day one and implementing it on the go. City of New York looked at us and said, we need a full suite solution, but not today. So we need to grow into it. So they took the step-by-step -step approach. So it's the ability to understand really what you as an organization are trying to accomplish today, but have the vision to know where you want to go tomorrow. And that we work with you conjunctively together to make your vision a reality rather than have a box of software and say, this is how you use it, this is how you do it. And in some cases, you may have to change your processes. Knowing how hard it is to change organizations and how to change human behavior, that's not always a good thing. And that's often a very difficult thing. So I encourage anyone and everyone when they are involved in evaluating any piece of technology, to understand how it's going to affect how you work and how your organization works and understand what your goals are today, tomorrow, but also tomorrow's tomorrow and be able to build upon that to make what your ultimate vision and ultimate goal is a reality. Yeah, right on. I know we have somebody in the audience today that says this is just specifically what they are working on right now. Um, you know, to, to make their city uh, smarter. I mean, what, I don't know, it's almost, I don't want to call it a buzz term, but smart cities, that's, that's definitely been used. I mean, are we just talking about like sensors and data or it sounds like if you're, in your opinion, there's also the procurement systems internally. So it's not just sort of citizen data, but also like inside the, the agencies. Um, what can procurement organizations hope to do with their procurement data uh, that could then translate into sort of smarter processes for citizens. Well, I think that I think that it goes back to that old uh, cliche: work smarter, work harder, work smart. And mm -hmm. I want people I want people that are working hard but smart because if technology, especially in procurement, is helping to identify your best your your best vendors and pricing and where problems may exist today. Or may where may where problems may be bubbling up on the horizon, you can address them faster. You can uh, you you have time. Here's one of the things that I always say about technology. People ask all the time. So if we if we take I value tomorrow, what does it cost and what's my ROI? Well, the cost is different from ever for everybody. So I'm not going to say it's it's going to cost you this much. But the ROI can really be boiled down to some very important factors, and that is if technology is increasing the amount of flexible time that you as a human being have to address problems, think about future opportunities, that's a huge win. And so if you're able to take manual-based processes today and, and operationalize those in a procurement platform, you're obviously going to unlock the in resources that you have sitting in front of you today. And that in and of itself is going to make you work smarter. It's going to make you think about where, um, uh, where you can go from there. You know, one of the questions that we had is um, our, our examples were for large ent entities. And is it adaptable to smaller ones? And the answer to that is, of course they are. Um, anytime you automate or create a, a, a put in a solution um, that is going to move you from manual to automation, um, whether you're a two-person organization or a 200-person organization, 
It has to do with what processes and what tools you're doing today. The other thing that I mentioned is that sort of hypothetical scenario that I, I left you with. When I spoke at Public Spend Forum event in uh, Los Angeles last month, I spoke before Mayor Garcetti, the mayor of LA, not having any idea what he was going to talk about. And he mentioned exactly what I referenced 10 minutes earlier. They recognized that they heard another smaller city was looking to procure electronic vehicles for something. And he realized that, well, they were going to, this one town was going to buy 20. Well, the city of Los Angeles was going to look at 50 to 100, and another city might look at, it's this pooling of resources. So the only way that that works is if everybody's thinking the same, thinking along the same lines, and procurement is procurement. It just depends on the volume and the depth of what you're procuring. So whether you're a small town, medium-sized town, small city, big city, it works across the spectrum. And you mentioned this earlier, but I just want to make sure because I think it's an important point. When you said that it's not like you have to just buy the complete solution all at once, I mean, you can, you can integrate it in phases. So if you're a smaller municipality, um, you know, are there components of, of, of what y'all offer that you could, you know, experiment with, um, you know, take, take a portion of it, apply, see how it goes, and then continue to build incrementally from there? So I wouldn't use the word experiment or try. Um, I think in any I think in any initiative, whether it's technology or 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 not, in any organization, and I would argue in in public sector even more importantly, you need to um, have focus and dive into it. So whether you start with procure to pay um, or any of the other modules. I don't think it's necessarily you are going to sort of try before you buy, to use that old cliche. I think what you've done is you identify a need in your organization and how technology, and in our case, our solution, is going to address those challenges that you, that you have as an organization, and what are the benefits that you hope to achieve, and then you go and you implement that, and then you move on to and we'll use the term module, but project two. That's basically what the city of New York is doing. Um, and it has a lot to do with where you are from a talent-wise, talent perspective of your organization and how many cumbersome processes you have that you inherently have um, that you're doing manually today. I mean, think back to some of those data points from the city of New York. What, 200 different agencies, 27 different um, solutions already, for an organization like that, public or private, to jump in and say, we're going to do it all at once, you're going to accomplish nothing. And so I admire and, and respect the city of New York for recognizing, here's where we want to be in two years, five years, 10 years. We need a suite to address all of that. But we also recognize our own limitations. And we'll start with mod with with X module, move to the next module, et cetera, et cetera. CACI, much more mature organization, much uh, easier to identify their challenges um, and their needs. And they recognize we can handle the full suite today. We'll take it and we will implement it on the go. And that's basically what they have done or are doing is a better way of putting it. Fantastic. A lot of wisdom in, in the words you've shared today, Ty. We really appreciate you being on with us. And, and for those in our audience, thank you all for joining us, too. We have a lot more great case study information and resources at publicspendforum.net, including a write-up of the event that Ty mentioned just a few moments ago, uh, the Technology Procurement Symposium in Los Angeles. Some great case studies there, especially for cities and municipalities. Uh, one of my favorites from that session was from Storm Sensor. Um, any, any one of you that joined us probably remember this as well. This is my second favorite, of course, other than Ty's presentation. My second favorite case study was from Storm Sensor and what they're doing um, 
to help municipalities deal with combined sewer overflow, which uh, affected me personally in my, in my uh, town just a few weeks ago with some flash flooding. Um, but at, at any rate, I uh, definitely invite you to check out publicspendform.net, look at some of the great resources we have out there for city and state um, officials looking to improve their procurement organizations and create value for their customer. So um, Unisa has shared out a recap from that event on our chat. Thank you very much, Unisa. Um, and, um, and thanks, Ty, again, and Dana for, for moderating our chat. This has been really terrific. and. Uh, we look forward to the next one. Thank you so much. Thanks, Frank.